Hey kids, welcome to lesson 13, introduction to arrays, number 22. Adding new items. Now we want our user to be able to add items of their own to the list. As you might have guessed, this is as easy as inserting an item into our array at the current index. We have to do this. Add an event handler to the add button. Write code in your event handler that uses get text to access the user's new item. Uses insert item to add that item to your array at the current index. And calls your update function to update the screen and the new item should be displayed. Run the program to confirm that the user can add items to the list and that the output displayed is correct. Woo! This sounds like a really tough one, but kids, it really isn't. And they pretty much gave us our step-by-step -step of what we have to do there. What do we have to do then? Well, we're going to add an event. In the event ID, well, what do we want to add? We want to use our add button. So in the add button is clicked, something is going to happen. What's going to happen here? This time, I'm going to have to access this information. And this information is going to change. So I can't really hard code this in. And since I can't hard code it, I know I'm going to need a variable. And the variable is just going to be new item. Well, what is new item going to be? New item is going to get text. Do you remember from some of our previous lessons how we had to get text from a user? Well, we're going to do the same thing here. We are going to get text. What text are we going to get? Well, that is going to be the user text input. Do we need quotes in here? Yes, we do. So user text input, that is just right here. User text input. Don't forget your semicolon after that. If we remember back to one of our other games, specifically our Mad Libs, we had to clear the contents of our set text box so the user could add another one. And that's what I want to do now. I just want to set the text then of what? The user input box user text input, I'm sorry. What am I going to set it to? Well, I just want to set it to blank. Don't forget your quotes around your user text input right there and a semicolon afterwards all this is doing is just clearing the box so we can add another one that means when they hit add it should do something and clear this box well what do you want it to do looking back up here we got the text from the user now we want to insert the item And if we go down here to insert item, we can just drag this over and we're going to need to add a couple pieces of information. Well, where are we adding to? We're adding to favorite thing. So the list here is fave thing. The index, what index do we want to go to? Well, we created this variable current index here, and that's really what I want to call to. So whatever the current index is, that's where I want to go. And what's the item? Well, the item is going to be whatever text we get from our user. So it's not going to be a C and we don't want it to print it out exactly like it. So we are going to take away the quotes and just put new item. That means we're going to insert an item under favorite things. Where are we going to insert it? Wherever our current index is at. And what is that thing going to be inserted? 
Well, whatever new item we got from our user. Finally, after that, what do we want to do? We want to update the display again. We have a little red box here, fave thing. If we look up here, fave thing, fave thing. And it looks like we have a little spelling error down here. What's a spelling error? Capitalize F instead of a lowercase. My camel case is wrong. Remember, lowercase the first word, uppercase the first letter, and all the other words. What does this event handler do then? When I hit the add button and hit click, we are going to create a new variable called new item. What's that variable going to do? All it's doing is getting the text from the user. Where is it getting it from? Right here, user text input. Then we're going to set the text of user text input to blank because we want to have the user add multiple things. We're going to insert an item under our array favorite things under whatever the current index is and it's going to be whatever text the user inputted. Then I'm going to update my display and display is just my two set text codes from the beginning of the lesson. Whew, sounds like a lot. I'm hoping this works. Let's go ahead and test this. Let's hit run. First thing I can do is I can go still next and last. Let's add a, another favorite thing. We'll put coding add to the list. That is now one of four. Oop, we went back too far. Let's reset run. Oops. Let's reset run. Let's put coding again and add. It now starts it off as one of four, so I have to go up. So it looks like it starts there. Let's add one and three of four and see what happens. Let's go and add another favorite thing, North Royalton. We'll add that. And it looks like it added it right after the one I was on. So I can scroll through these. If I go below one or above five, I still spit out an error. I assume we're going to handle that here in another lesson. But it looks like everything is working pretty good. Looking back up here to our do this, we added an event handler to the add button. We wrote code that got the user's text and inserted it into our array. We also updated our function to call that new display. It sounded like a lot, but once we broke it down, it really wasn't too bad. I think that's all code.org wants from us. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. Keep on working. We're almost done with this lesson.